The 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a film that I have recently watched for the first time and let me say I was not disappointed. I like how this film starts off with trying to pretend that it's based on an actual event. The film which you are about to see is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of five youths. But it was 1974, a time before the internet, so I'm sure it was easy to convince the audience that this story was true. And yes, I know that this story is inspired by a real serial killer, but that's where it ends because about 99% of this film is all made up. Because no, a man wearing a human face as a mask running around with a chainsaw did not actually happen. And if you're disappointed that this film was made up, well, that's a, that's a bit concerning. Now this movie was the first uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre massacre film that I had ever watched, and two things that caught me off guard is one, I didn't expect a Leatherface to act the way that he did. He did a lot of crazy things like jumped around and made weird noises, but I understand why this character was the way that he was. And the second thing that I did not expect is that Leatherface does not work alone, he actually works with his family, who are equally as crazy and scary. I think back to the family dinner scene where we really get to see what kind of family Leatherface has, and for being known as the Chainsaw Massacre, Leatherface is not shy about using his meat grinder on his victims. But overall, this film feels very gritty and unsettling, so I can see how back in 1974, this really did a number on the audience. One of my favorite things about this movie is I feel like it ends perfectly. The final victim of Leatherface actually ends up getting away as she hitchhikes on a random truck that is passing by. And as the truck is driving off, she is uh, screaming hysterically because, you know, she realizes that she survived this madness. The best part about this scene is the final shot where we get to see the reaction of Leatherface. He is standing in the middle of the road, waving his chainsaw around like a maniac, as I am sure he is very triggered that one of his victims managed to get away from him. To top it off, there is no music playing during this scene, which I think is the best choice they could have gone for. And then it cuts to black. Such an iconic and unsettling way to cut a film to its credits. So for this type of gritty movie, this ending works perfectly. And then we have the sequel, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. What's crazy to me is that this movie came out an entire 12 years after the first one. So for over a decade, the world was without their favorite Texas killer, Leatherface. And moving on from the first film that had a gritty tone, the second one has a genre shift over to black comedy. I mean, I knew I was in for a trip as soon as I seen the poster for this movie. We got the family of Leatherface posing like the breakfast club. Everything in this film is over the top and quite goofy, and it has a very campy feel to it. Not to mention that we also got Leatherface having the hots for one of his female victims, which of course isn't very pleasant to watch. We also get the introduction of a new Leatherface family member, and his name is Chop Top. This character really brings a lot of the black comedy, as well as the campy feel, to the movie. Look what you did to my sonny Bono, wig dude! Oh god damn, I can't believe it! Now the reason that the second film shifted genres over to black comedy is because the director originally wanted the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre to have more black comedy in it, but as you know that film is disturbing from start to finish, so for the second one he really made sure he implemented all the black comedy that was meant to be in the first one. So did I enjoy the direction that the second film took? Not exactly. I'm not a fan of campy type of films, and that's just my preference. I prefer the disturbing tone to the first one way more and I also think that that tone fits the franchise much better. So I'm glad that whenever reboots come out they are the gritty dark versions and not what the second one was. Again that's just my preference because I know there is a lot of people that love the second Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So, I think that about does it for the first year of Absolute Filmmaking. This will be my last video of the year. I hope you guys have been enjoying the content. I really do try to do the best videos that I can. So if you enjoy my content, don't forget to support me by leaving a like and subscribing. This has been Absolute Filmmaking, signing off for the year. Until next year, goodbye.